Section 4. Methods of Money Laundering Banks and Financial Institutions Criminals and potential money launderers use many instruments and vehicles to transfer the illicit funds. They will look for any loophole in a legitimate system to transfer their money. They use financial institutions and instruments more than any other process for money laundering. The reason for this is that if they overcome or pass the financial regulation, it will be extremely difficult to prove that a particular person is engaged in money laundering. Banks and Financial Institutions As banks and financial institutions deal with money more than any other organization or industry, they are the most vulnerable to money laundering. In both the past and the present, banks are used as important mechanisms in all three stages of money. What follows are some of the areas that are used for money laundering. Electronic Fund Transfer There are many methods of electronic fund transfer, such as BEFTN, ACH, ATM, cell phone, magnetic tapes, etc. Every day, millions of wire transfers take place and illegal funds can be doubtlessly concealed among these millions of legitimate transfers. For example, money launderers may initiate unauthorized domestic or international electronic transfers of funds, such as ACH debits or by making cash advances onto a stolen credit card and placing the funds into an account established to receive the transfers. To circumvent detection, the money launderer may take basic precautions such as varying the amounts sent, keeping them relatively small and under reporting thresholds, and, where possible, using reputable organizations. Remote Deposit Capture RDC provides the customer with a convenient way to deposit checks without going to the bank or ATM. In the past, this was available only via specialized scanners to commercial customers, but now many banks allow individuals to deposit pictures of checks taken with their mobile phone. Although this reduced the processing and paper cost, it introduced a new type of risk because criminals or money launderers do not need to come to the bank. Hence, it reduces the risk of detection. It might even be possible to set up multiple imaging devices, e.g. multiple scanners and multiple permitted mobile phones, that will enable a money launderer to allow others to process checks through the system. It might even be possible for the money launderer to have someone else set up the account and provide him or her with the ability to deposit checks. Without proper controls, RDC can also be misused to facilitate violations of sanctions requirements. Correspondent Banking Under Correspondent Banking, respondent banks obtain a wide range of services through correspondent relationships, including cash management, for example interest-bearing accounts in a variety of currencies, international wire transfer of funds, check clearing, payable through accounts, and foreign exchange services. Primarily, correspondent banking is vulnerable for two reasons. 1. By their nature, correspondent banking relationships create a situation in which a financial institution carries out financial transactions on behalf of customers of another institution. This indirect relationship means that the correspondent bank provides services for individuals or entities for which it has neither verified the identities nor obtained any first-hand knowledge. The amount of money that flows through correspondent accounts can pose a significant threat to financial institutions as they process large volumes of transactions for their customers' customers. This makes it more difficult to identify suspect transactions as the financial institution generally does not have the information on the actual parties conducting the transaction to know whether they're unusual. Payable through accounts in some correspondent relationships, the respondent bank's customers are permitted to conduct their own transactions, including sending wire transfers, making and withdrawing deposits, and maintaining checking accounts, through the respondent bank's correspondent account without first clearing the transactions through the respondent bank. Those arrangements are called payable through accounts, or PTAs. 
PTAs held in the names of respondent banks often involve checks encoded with the bank's account number and a numeric code to identify the sub-account, which is the account of the respondent bank's customer. Sometimes, however, the sub-account holders are not identified to the correspondent bank. Elements of a PTA relationship that can threaten the correspondent bank's money laundering defences include PTAs with foreign institutions licensed in offshore financial service centres with weak or nascent bank supervision and licensing laws. PTA arrangements where the correspondent bank regards the respondent bank as its sole customer and fails to apply its customer due diligence policies and procedures to the customers of the respondent bank. PTA arrangements in which sub-account holders have currency deposits and withdrawal privileges. PTA used in conjunction with a subsidiary, representative or other offices of the respondent bank which may enable the respondent bank to offer the same services as a branch without being subject to supervision. Concentration accounts Concentration accounts are also known as special use, omnibus, settlement, suspense, intraday, sweep or collection accounts. Concentration accounts are frequently used to facilitate transactions for private banking, trust and custody accounts, funds transfers and international affiliates. Money laundering risks can arise in concentration accounts if the customer identifying information, such as name, transaction amount and account number, is separated from the financial transaction. If separation occurs, the audit trail is lost and accounts may be misused or administered improperly. Private banking Private banking provides highly personalized and confidential products and services to wealthy clients at fees that are often based on assets under management. Private banking often operates semi-autonomously from other parts of a bank. Because of extreme competition and income targets, private banking can be used as a mediator for money laundering. Use of private investment companies in private banking in offshore or international financial centres, private banking customers are often non-residents, meaning they conduct their banking in a country outside of the one in which they reside. Their assets may be moved overseas where they're held in the name of corporate vehicles like private investment companies or PICs established in secrecy havens. PICs are corporations established by individual bank customers and others in offshore jurisdictions to hold assets. They are shell companies formed to maintain clients' confidentiality and for various tax or trust-related reasons. They have been an element of many high-profile laundering cases in recent years as they are excellent laundering vehicles. Politically Exposed Persons There are two types of politically exposed persons or PEPs, foreign PEPs and local PEPs. PEPs are individuals who are or have been entrusted with prominent public functions by a foreign country or local government. For example, heads of state or of government, senior politicians, senior government, judicial or military officials, senior executives of state-owned corporations, or important party political officials. They can pressurize the bank and financial institutions to do activities for their own interests, which may lead to money laundering. Structuring this is the most commonly known money laundering method. Developing a scheme for a transaction to avoid triggering an alarm or a reporting or record keeping requirement is called structuring. A common form of structuring is smurfing. This is where multiple people deposit or buy multiple financial instruments in amounts that are under the alarm threshold to avoid detection. Microstructuring. Microstructuring is the same as structuring, however in this process the fund is broken into much smaller portions making it extremely difficult to identify. Credit cards Credit card accounts are less likely to be used in the placement stage of ML because of restricted cash payments. They're more likely to be used in the layering or integration stage. The money launderer prepays his or her credit card using illicit funds that he or she have already introduced into the banking system, creating a credit balance on their account. They then request a credit refund which enables them to further conceal the origin of the funds. This creates layering. Using this illicit money that they placed in their bank account and the credit card refund, they can now buy a new item. Through these steps, they've integrated their illicit funds into the financial system. 
Debit and prepaid cards. Prepaid cards can be used for money laundering. The risk factors with the prepaid card are Anonymous cardholders Anonymous funding Anonymous access to funds High value limits and no limits on the number of cards individuals can acquire Global access to cash through ATMs Offshore card issuers may not observe laws in all jurisdictions Substitute for bulk cash smuggling Third party payment processors TPPPs TPPPs are generally bank customers that provide payment processing services to merchants and other business entities and often use their commercial bank accounts to conduct payment processing for their merchant clients. Many times they are not subject to any AML or CFT requirements. The TPPP may maintain relationships at multiple institutions, which hinders a financial institution's ability to see the entire customer relationship. This is done on purpose by TPPPs engaged in suspicious activity to limit the financial institution's ability to recognize suspicious activity and exit the relationship. Trade-based money laundering Many companies use letters of credit or LCs for payment to foreign buyers. Money launderers can use LC to transfer illicit funds. There are six ways to process trade-based money laundering. 1. Over or under invoicing 2. Over or short shipping 3. Ghost shipping 4. Shell companies 5. Multiple invoicing 6. Black market trades Insurance companies According to the FATF, in its 2004 to 2005 Typologies report, across the whole insurance sector, life insurance appears to be by far the most attractive area to money launderers. Substantial sums can be invested in widely available life insurance products and many feature a high degree of flexibility, whilst at the same time ensuring non-negligible rates of return. Many life insurance policies are structured to pay a fixed amount upon death of the insured party, while other life insurance products, such as whole or permanent life insurance, have an investment value which can create a cash value above the original investment if it is cancelled by the policyholder. Such characteristics, whilst of considerable value to the honest policyholder, also offer money launderers various opportunities to legitimise their ill-gotten funds.